Last but not least, concept three, we are going to talk about the urinary system, which can sometimes be referred to as the excretory system. So what is it? Major functions of your urinary system are filtering your blood and regulation. We're going to send toxins and waste out in our urine and then retain any nutrients that the body um, needs that may have made its way um, into the urinary system and not have gotten absorbed originally. Urination um, is the act of emptying the bladder. And this is just a silly, I think it's, it's a fancy word for urination, but I'm just going to refer to urination. It's re it removes toxins from the body and it maintains homeostasis of our water volume. And water volume has a big role in blood pressure. So if you're thinking urinary system and you're just thinking urine, um, we're talking about the blood a ton too. So we can't, concept four, all of this stuff is so integrated. But concept four, transport, we're really talking about the blood here too. The key structure of your urinary system are your kidneys, which are right here. And then other structures that are important to you are your ureters, your bladder, and your urethra. And there are other organs in your body that filter. Your lungs filter and your liver for sure filters. It has huge roles in filtering. But I, I really just don't think there's anything like what the kidney's doing. It is like the ultimate filter. Because think of it this way, at any given moment, 20% of your blood volume is in your kidneys. That's a lot of blood in, in, in those two little organs, which is kind of crazy. Also, um, urine is about 95% water. It's mainly water um, and about 5% slightly acidic solutes. Um, the composition of our urine tells us so much about our overall health um, and specifically what's going on in our kidneys too, but we're going to see that in our urinalysis lab activity um, when we're going to kind of analyze the composition of some urine samples. So let's dive in first with the kidneys. Um, as I go through this with my students, I want you to have out your big body diagram of the urinary system and be labeling um, the different parts. So the kidneys, I refer to them as the MVP of the urinary system. They're in your dorsal body wall. Um, basically, they're on either side of your spine. In the superior lumbar cavity um, of your body, um, so they're somewhat protected by the lower part of your rib cage. They're kind of like tucked up there. Um, the liver kind of gets in the way of the right kidney, which is why it appears a little lower, as you can see in this diagram. Um, so that is real. And then if you remember from unit three, control and coordination, your adrenal glands are like little triangle hats that sit on top of your kidneys, um, just to give you a little context. But I always think it's interesting how your kidneys are are in, in your back. If you've ever had kidney stones, I hope you have not. I unfortunately have. You, It starts as back pain. Um, and then it kind of, the pain spreads as, it, as the stone travels through your urinary system. But So that's kind of an overview of where your kidneys are located. And why do I say they're the MVP? Look at all the things they regulate. They regulate water volume in the body and osmolality, which is just solute concentration. They regulate, because that ion concentrations, your acid-base balance, and thus that's going to have a role in your pH in your body. Um, they regulate the excretion of foreign substances, red blood cell production, they have a role in blood pressure, and then also your kidneys convert leftover amino acids to carbs or lipids so that we can store, um, store them. And then the nitrogen that remains from those amino acids, since carbs and lipids don't have nitrogen in them, that gets converted to ammonia and then urea, which um, we eventually will pee out in our urine. All right, if you're looking at a kidney, so I want you to label um, this cross section as well on your big body diagram. There's kind of three major regions. So the renal cortex is considered like the outermost part, even though it's actually surrounded by a fibrous capsule, which protects the kidney um, from infection and that um, fluid that surrounds it. But then just inside of the renal cortex is the renal medulla. 
And these are formed from mostly of parallel bundles of urine collecting tubules and capillaries. And that's kind of what gives each one of those little pyramid like shapes um, that striped look. In between each of those, we call that space the renal columns that just separates them. And then the renal pelvis is kind of what we see in the, um, the most interior part here. This is essentially a funnel-shaped tube, and it has smooth muscle walls, and it propels urine using that peristalsis process we talked about in concept one into your ureters. Um, there's a picture of one. There's one for each kidney, and then eventually on to your bladder. So that's an overview of its structure, um, but I can't talk about its structure without also mentioning its blood and nerve supply. So when you see the word renal, just we're talking kidneys here. So the renal artery delivers oxygenated blood from the heart via the aorta, um, which is a very important artery, to the kidney. Um, so that's where it's coming from. You should remember aorta um, from unit four transport. And then the renal vein is going to take deoxygenated um, but filter blood out of the kidneys um, and to the inferior vena cava, which is then going to, um, which is a very critical vein that's going to bring it back to the heart. And then the renal plexus is just, it's not pictured really anywhere here, but it's just referring to the network of the autonomic nerve fibers and the ganglia that are innervating um, the kidney. Now, um, one last thing to mention, so you can kind of see how the artery and the veins, they branch um, into smaller and smaller components. If you remember from Unit 4, arteries um, can feed into smaller arteries, which feed into arterioles, which are even smaller, which then feed into capillaries, which make up capillary beds, which are all in here. They're just not pictured. And then those capillary um, beds, excuse me, branch into venules, which are like teeny tiny veins, which those branch into bigger um, veins, which vent, and then all will lead back to the renal vein. So just a little review of um, blood vessel organization, if you will, um, from unit four. Okay, in class we're gonna stop and we're gonna do some fun lab stations about kidneys. Um, one of the stations will just have a brief overview of what I talked about, but the rest are going to all talk about different um, problems we can have with our kidneys, um, which I think are pretty interesting. So that's what we're going to do now, but for the sake of the video, we're going to keep powering through. We have got to talk about nephrons. These are the structural and functional units of the kidney. They're essentially microscopic filtering units where blood gets processed. They're the smallest physical structure that's capable of carrying out the function of the kidney. So if you know how a nephron works, you know how the entire kidney works. Each of your kidneys has about one million of these working together in order to make your urine, your urine which is crazy. Um... And your kid, or your excuse me, your nephron has two main parts: um, the renal corpuscle, which is located in the renal cortex. So if we kind of zoom in, if you remember the renal cortex we talked about on the last slide, that's where um, this renal corpuscle is, which is um, right here. Um, and then the rest is this like tubule that you can see. I tried to make two tub renal tubules the same color as it is in this picture. And those tubules start in the renal cortex, but then they go into the renal medulla also. So now let's talk about, let's zoom in on this here and talk about the structure of a nephron. I want you on your big body diagram to label these parts. So we have one of the main parts is that renal corpus corpuscle, excuse me, it has the glomerulus, which is just this ball of a ton of capillaries that you see in here. And that glomerulus is surrounded by a glomerulus capsule, which is also referred to in some texts as Bowman's capsule. All right, the rest of this, remember, this tan stuff is basically these renal tubules. So you have the proximal convoluted um, tubule of the renal tubule, 
the nephron loop of the renal tubule, which is also referred to as the root of Henle, and then the distal convoluted tubule of the renal tubule. And then down here we have the collecting ducts, which are moving fluid into the renal pelvis. So remember, main parts are the renal corpuscle, which is in um, the renal cortex. These renal tubules are in the cortex and medulla, and then the collecting ducts are emptying into the renal pelvis. So if we're trying to connect back all the way to um, this picture, that's what we're talking about. Okay, that's an overview of the structure. Let's talk about how nephrons work to filter blood and make urine. It's basically a three-step process. First is the glomerulus. Excuse me, I cannot talk today. The glom glom glomerular, wow, I'm just going to give up. Filtration. This creates a cell and protein-free filtrate from your blood in the glomerulus of the renal corpuscles. So that's your glomerulus, just to remind you. Filtrate is just everything in your blood plasma except for the protein, essentially, in the living parts. This is Filtrate is different from urine. Urine is your unneeded substances, like excess minerals, metabolic wastes, and toxins that get filtered out so they can leave the body. So we're going to make filtrate first, then we'll make urine, okay? So filtrate comes first. It's a, this filtration is a passive process. Um, the glomeruli act as mechanical filters, essentially, between your blood and um, the capsule that surrounds the glomeruli. And basically, hydrostatic pressure is just going to push fluids like water and solutes like glucose, amino acids, and nitrogenous waste just through the membrane um, in order to create this filtrate. All right, next is um, tubular reabsorption. So we're going to just get all this means is we're going to go through the tubes. You can see all the, the arrows here. And we're just going to reabsorb into the capillaries, okay, any needed substances from the filtrate. So we see whatever's in the filtrate. We're like, oh, yeah, we actually need that. I don't know how that's still in the filtrate. We're going to just pull that out, pull it back in the blood, and this is going to go down in the renal tubules and also the collecting ducts. So most of your filtrate's contents, like sodium and water, are just going to get reabsorbed back into the blood at this time. And this can be a passive process via diffusion, facilitated diffusion, and osmosis, or it can be active transport, which requires ATP, which you should remember from Biology 1, or Unit 1 where we reviewed all this. Um, it's just depending on what we're reabsorbing will depend on how we reabsorb it. And then last is the tubular secretion. So this is also in the renal tubules and the collecting ducts. This is where any unneeded substances are going to be removed from the filtrate and then moved to the renal pelvis, where it'll then be excreted from the body as urine. So that's going to be taking things out like hydrogen ions and potassium and ammonium and cre um, creatinine. Um, they're going to take those from your capillaries um, into the filtrate. And then secreted urine is going to end up containing filtered substances, but also secreted substances too. And this is a really important process for maintaining our blood's pH. So how is all of this regulated? The glomerular, I cannot, I can't today. I don't know what's going on in my mouth. Filtration rate is how much blood can pass through the glomeruli every minute. And this is controlled both intrinsically through renal autoregulation and extrinsically through your endocrine and nervous system. So intrinsically, how are the kidneys regulating themselves? How are they self-regulating? Well, they use a myogenic mechanism, which basically means if your blood pressure is too high, it's going to be pushing way too much blood into the kidneys. The muscles that are in your glomeruli will shrink so they just can't take as much in. So they're just going to respond to that internally. And then there's also this feedback loop between the renal tubules and the glomeruli um, based on the amount of salt. So it's a, a, it's a negative feedback loop that's going to cause some signaling there too to help self-regulate so that your kidneys don't get overwhelmed. And then, of course, there's always going to be some extrinsic in, um, control via your nervous and endocrine system. So, for example, ADH, or the antidiuretic hormone, gets secreted by your posterior pituitary gland, helps your body know if it needs to retain water um, in order to stay hydrated and transport that water into cells through channels called aquaporins. 
um, in order to maintain blood pressure. So it's going to play a role in that as well. All right, last, we've got to mention the other structures of the urinary system because I've spent almost all the notes talking about the kidneys, but that's because they're so important. We also have your ureters, which are paired tubes that transport urine from the kidneys to your bladder. They're moving urine using that peristalsis method that we talked about in the digestive system. We have your bladder, which is just a hollow, smooth, and collapsible muscular sac that serves as a temporary storage reservoir for your urine. And this is actually so fascinating to me. Your full bladder can comfortably hold about 500 milliliters of liquid, which is a lot of liquid. That's a lot of urine. But it can stretch and expand to hold up to one liter of liquid um, if it needs to. That is so nuts. That's your bladder, sorry. And then your urethra, this is a thin-walled muscular tube that carries urine from the bladder um, via an involuntary internal urethral sphincter that is made of smooth muscle that just lets the urine flow in. And then it carries it out of the body via the voluntary external urethral sphincter. It's made of skeletal muscle, so you can control, hopefully, when your body releases urine or not. And something interesting about your urethra is it is much longer in males than females because their urethra goes all the way through the penis, whereas in females it's just a much shorter structure, which is something that should have come up in the lab stations about the kidneys we talked about because females are much more likely to get urinary tract infections because their urethra is so short that the bacteria, if it gets in there, doesn't have as far to go in order to get into your bladder um, as compared to males, which have a much longer pathway um, that they would have to travel in order to cause an infection. So that is our urinary system.